In AP Chemistry in Unit 5 of Kinetics, there is a section called Steady State Approximation. And what is involved in this section that is different is that it is going to involve a topic called equilibrium, which you may not have covered yet in AP Chemistry. So the first thing is, how are you going to recognize what a steady state approximation uh, mechanism is? So first off, it is going to be a mechanism, so it's going to have what are called elementary steps. And then we covered that in 5.4. So there are going to be these elementary steps um, in a reaction mechanism. And of the mechanism, it's going to have at least two steps. But the problem is, um, in these elementary steps, uh, one of the steps will be an equilibrium step. And it tends to be the first step. Like they'll say step one, um, or it's called an equilibrium reaction, or it's a reaction that reaches equilibrium. And what that means is, the big thing is to look for is that it has these double arrows. Now the arrows could be like that, or they could be like that. Either way, look for that in your mechanism, is that it has double arrows. The next thing is these also could be called, they are a me mechanism with a fast initial step. So they're a mechanism, again, having many elementary steps, but they're a mechanism with a fast initial step. So this equilibrium step will be the initial one, will be the first one, and then always it'll say fast. Okay, so right when you have that reaction, so you have like A turning into B, and on the side it'll say the word fast. And then the last thing I want to put here, just in really big capital letters, is that it does involve equilibrium. And if you haven't um, talked about equilibrium yet, I'm having a struggle writing equilibrium today, I guess. All right, here we go. So equal... I won't capitalize it. That'll make it easier. For some reason, capitalizing it made my mind not work. And equilibrium is in Unit 7. So you probably haven't covered it if you've gone in order if this is Unit 5. So we will talk about equilibrium in the next section uh, or in Unit 7. The one thing you want to know about equilibrium is that what's called the rate of the forward reaction, so I'm just going to put rate of F, that's the forward reaction, is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. So it's, it's basically your concentrations of your reactants and your products, they're not equal, okay, don't, don't think that, but they uh, stay constant. They don't change anymore, they don't have to be zero, in fact, they're, usually they're not zero, but they do not change. So the concentrations of your reactants and products no longer are changing, but the reaction is still happening, it's just what you're pushing forward and pushing backwards in terms of concentration is the same. It's kind of like putting $100 in your bank account than spending $100. So you're not coming out ahead or behind and you're at an equilibrium position. All right, so for the next thing for the steady state approximation is intermediates cannot be in the rate law. So how are you gonna end up dealing with that? So if you have like uh, equilibrium steps, let's just say you have A turning into B, and then maybe in a following reaction, you have B plus C turning into D, okay? Just using letters. What you're going to have to do, and I'm going to talk us through this with an ex actual example, is B cannot be in the, um, if B is an intermediate, B cannot be in, I'm just going to cross it out with like purple, B cannot be in the rate law. So if you wrote the rate law, you'd say rate here, this is an elementary step, it was K times A to the first power using that concept we did in 5.4. And then you'd write rate equals K. These would be the rate laws for the elementary steps, step one and two. So this would be step one, this would be step two. And then you'd say B and then to the first power in C, but you can't because an intermediate right here, this intermediate cannot be in the rate law. So what you're gonna end up doing with the practice problem that's coming is we're gonna substitute basically the reactant in that position. And so your rate law will change and this B will be replaced by A but also the K that goes along with it. So I will kind of explain that in terms of um, the uh, reaction below, but the one thing I will tell you, I'm gonna zoom in here, is that the rate of the forward reaction is that, and you can write the rate law for the reverse reaction uh, with some new K, 
let's just call it k. Um, sometimes in a book they'll go negative 1, and then this will be 1. So it's the opposite. So you might even see this k to the 1, and then k to the negative 1. It's basically the reverse. Some books will actually use the f and the r. But that is going to be then b coming back to the first. So it's almost like writing the elementary rate law for this direction instead. And then, the, here's the key, these two are equal. So what happens then is this portion right here equals this portion right here. You're going to isolate for it. In fact, I'll just try to see if I can sneak it in um, right here. I'm going to erase this rate law because we can't use it anyway. So what you'll do then, just to kind of talk you through this part of it, and I'll do this again in the practice problem coming. K, um, oops, sorry. So K1 and then A to the first power is going to equal this reverse rate constant and then B. And that's because the rates are equal. And then what you're going to do is, so because you don't want B in the equation, you'll then move the K values over. So you have K1 divided by the K to the negative 1 and then times the concentration of A, just barely enough room, and then that's going to equal B. And then what will happen is you'll substitute that into the rate law if that is the slow step, okay? So that's sort of how you're going to see this with the example problem that I have below here. So again, kind of zoom out. We're kind of covering three parts again. How do you recognize the steady state approximation? What do you do when an intermediate is involved because it tends to be involved? The first step is typically fast then. Where in the past, the first step was slow. And then let's say this was your slow step. You then can't have that intermediate in the equation, so we have to deal with it. So let's look at a specific example just to make more sense of this. So in this specific example, here is our overall reaction. And I'm going to cover the two requirements for a mechanism to be possible. So that's going to be in a previous video on 5.7 and 5.8, which is how do we know if a mechanism is even valid or possible? So the first thing is, Let's just check that easy part first, is does the overall reaction um, come from the elementary reactions above? So let's do that first. So the first check off for this, this first requirement is what it's called, and I covered that in a separate video, is does our overall reaction, this one, does it happen from these different steps? Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna cross off the intermediate again in purple. So the intermediate is going to be N2O2, okay? And then there is a second intermediate, this, or sorry, yeah, N2O2, and then there's a second intermediate, N2O. So that would be called, if you want to name these, uh, dinitrogen dioxide is one intermediate. And then dinitrogen monoxide is another intermediate. So both of those are intermediates. And then let's just check if the summation of steps, so basically you sum steps one, two, and three, and then hope, for, hope we get this overall reaction that's right here. Maybe you want to box that one out. So let's just check. Um, so if you bring down the hydrogens, there's two moles of hydrogen. And then if you bring down the other surviving uh, reactant is the 2NO, the uh, nitrogen monoxide. And then again, I'm not going to highlight it, but you have nitrogen, uh, and that's okay that it's first. And then two waters, it doesn't really matter which order those are in as products. So it's okay that, you know, you have your uh, nitrogen second or first, and the two waters can be second or first. So that meets the first requirement. The second requirement is, here's my experimentally determined rate law. They'll tell you that. Okay, I'm going to box that out. So they told us in the question that this was the experimentally determined rate law. And then the second checkoff is, does that match the what's called like the molecularity of the slow step. Now, the problem is the slow step has that intermediate in it. So what I'm going to do first is kind of apply what I just did before, is that the rate of the forward reaction is going to be K and then NO squared. And then the rate of my reverse direction is going to be K and then I'll put in the same thing that most, most textbooks do, K1 and then K to the negative 1. But you will see like an F and an R sometimes too for forward and reverse. And then it would be to the product, which was N2O2. So that was first order, predicted off the molecularity. And then the other one is second order, the forward reaction based off molecularity. And then those two are equal. 
So the rate, you know, here's kind of the easy thing. They'd say rate of the forward equals rate of the reverse. That's the definition of being in equilibrium. So again, you have K1 and then NO2 equals K to the negative 1, N2O2. And then again, our intermediate that we don't want in our rate law. So I haven't even wrote the rate law for that one yet. I'll put it off to the side here. We know that's the slow step, so that's the one that's going to determine um, the kinetics of this experiment, and the rate law is going to be from it. But if I wrote it, I would have H2, and then I would have N2O2, and that is already not going to work because it doesn't match. If you look, that does not match the experimentally determined one, but it also is a problem because we can't have that um, intermediate in there. Okay, so let's keep going here. So then you want to isolate everything so that you have the N2. I'm just going to keep it on the uh, right side here. So you have the uh, rate constant of the forward reaction divided by the rate constant of the reverse reaction. And then basically you keep it in the numerator or just times the concentration of NO squared. And then what we're going to do is we're going to substitute this in. It's like kind of algebra. We're going to substitute that, if you think about it, into right there. So that's what this is. So we're going to put that into the equation. So I'm just going to start way over here on the left. Rate equals the rate constant from the rate law with the hydrogen. But then I'm going to put in this spot here the K1 divided by the K negative 1 and then NO squared but we can reduce this all and put all of these rate constants together. So this is interesting. This is going to be, I'm going to call it what most people do. They'll call it a K prime. And I'll define what K prime is last. It's all the rate constants put together. So it's the rate constant from this rate, elementary rate step. It's also the constant for the forward and the reverse reaction of the other step, the step number one. All right, so this is hydrogen. And then we can put the NO2, or NO, sorry, NO squared, I should say not NO2. And so if you look now, now we've got, here's the experimentally determined rate law. It does match. And so then this does check out. So this is where I'm going to put a little happy face. Um, this does work, that we meet the second requirement uh, for a mechanism to be valid. Okay, so this is saying, yep, it's valid. And number one was that this is a valid. So we have both saying this is possible as a mechanism for this reaction. The other thing I want to do is write down, like, what is K prime? And what I'm going to do is just call this one, uh, a, I'm just going to put, like, a 2 since it's from the reaction number 2. So K prime, sometimes it's like a curvy, it's a little ex 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 extra. But it's going to be um, the K2 times the K1. And then you have it also divided by the uh um, forward. This was the forward one, and this was the reverse one. So again, remember that this was the forward reaction's K value, and this was the reverse reaction. So K prime is like an overall K. So I'm just going to call this what it is. It's an overall uh, rate constant, and it actually has three rate constants in it, but they are all constant. So it's a compilation is the best word for it of all three rate constants. All right, so these are a little bit more complicated, and a big thing is how do you recognize that you have one of these uh, steady state approximations? It's that they have an equilibrium step. It's typically the first step, and it's the fast step. They'll say, say fast. And then what you have to do is use kind of like a algebraic solving for it. You have to substitute in that, uh, in this case, that reactant in for the reactant of that step so that it doesn't include an intermediate. And then in the end, I'm just going to uh, circle this in red to check if it's valid. Uh, it is valid. Uh, I'm just going to circle this whole, th or box out this whole thing. We did see that it does match the, um, the predicted or experimentally determined rate law. And again, we did get that it is, I'm just going to box this out too. We did get that the overall reaction was the same. All right, so I hope that helps solve your uh, steady state approximation questions, they are a little more complicated, but look on the AP exam for that equilibrium step. Um, all of them will have that in there, and then you just have a little extra uh, algebra to solve the problem.